Yes, photosynthesis has two major steps. The first one being light reaction, also called as photochemical reaction. And the second step is dark reaction. And first, uh, photochemical reaction happens in the thylakoidal part and also in the lamella part. The dark reaction occurs in the stroma part of the chloroplast. Okay, now quickly. The light reaction, it is a light trapping process or the energy trapping process. During this step, the solar energy is converted into chemical energy and uh, two major molecules are formed. One is ATP and the other one is NADPH2. And NADPH2 is a reductant. So these are the two energy rich molecules formed in light reaction. Next in dark reaction, it is a reduction of carbon dioxide that happens. So the actual chemical reaction occurs in the dark reaction part. And this also happens during the daytime itself. And to reduce carbon dioxide, ATP as well as the NADPH, which is a reductant, are required. So the product of light reactions are being utilized in the dark reaction part. Okay, now coming to the pigments that is involved in energy trapping process. Every pigment has the ability to absorb the light, but it cannot absorb the, light, the complete light. Each and every pigment has their own specific wavelength. Only in that wavelength or in that range, they will absorb the light. Okay, so that absorption is called absorption spectrum. The wavelength of light absorbed by various pigments are called as absorption spectrum. Next. The pigments involved in photosynthesis would be chlorophyll molecules, keratinoids, and phycobilins. We classify them based on the wavelength they are going to absorb. Next, next. Absorption spectrum. The definition is important. It is the amount of light absorbed by pigment at a different wavelength in the visible spectrum of light. Okay, so as we said, every pigment will have its own wavelength of absorption. Okay, so the amount of light that is absorbed by a pigment at a different wavelength in the visible region of light is called absorption spectrum. So this is the absorption spectrum of various pigments. We have uh, represented here chlorophyll A, B and carotenoids. So you can see the blue color graph represents the wavelength uh, absorbed by chlorophyll A and green one, green one is of chlorophyll B and yellow is of carotenoids. Okay, now action spectrum. The rate of photosynthesis at different wavelength of light after absorption spectrum is called as action spectrum. Okay, the rate of photosynthesis at different wavelength of light after absorbing the light in the respective wavelength by pigments is called action spectrum. Okay, so this is the action spectrum. We can see this black color one which shows a increased rate of photosynthesis. At two different wavelengths, the, the photosynthesis seems to be higher. And if you could compare it with the um, ab action, ab sorry, absorption spectrum of the pigment, there is a close superimposition of a chlorophyll A and the maximum rate of photosynthesis shown. Okay, so this graph was actually depicting the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A. At exactly the same range, the increased rate of photosynthesis is also seen. So we can come to a conclusion that chlorophyll A are the essential pigments for photosynthesis, the most essential ones. Okay. When action spectrum of photosynthesis is superimposed on the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A, the following observations can be made. First one is maximum absorption of chlorophyll A is in the blue on the red region. So which means that plant show high rate of photosynthesis in blue and red region and chlorophyll A will absorb exactly in these regions. Second is the maximum rate of photosynthesis is in the blue and the red region. Hence chlorophyll A is a primary pigment in photosynthesis. This is what we can conclude.